Good morning, and thank you for joining us today. My name is Jackie Gould, and I'm a sales representative here at Lowry Solutions. I will be monitoring the question window through the course of this educational webinar. Please send any questions you have, and we will address those at the conclusion of the presentation. Today we will be discussing the impact of IT asset management. We have three great presenters in store for you. First off is Paul Rakowitz, our Vice President of Software Development. Amy Morasso, a Product Marketing Manager, focusing on printing solutions, labels, and tags. And finally, Chris Pritchard, our Senior Systems Analyst here at Lowry. Again, thank you for joining us. I will now turn things over to Paul to get us started. Thank you, Jackie. And hello and welcome to all of you who have joined us today for this webinar on IT Asset Management, or ITAM for short. We're going to cover how you can achieve 99% inventory accuracy, decrease audit hours by 90% or more, and generate your ROI in less than 12 months. By way of a little background about us, Lowry Solutions has been in business since 1974 and is positioned within the Automatic Identification and Data Capture, or AIDC, market space as a trusted advisor, bringing its customers best-of-breed products and solutions according to the specific needs of the client. Within AIDC, one area in which Lowry continues to focus is asset tracking, and with its Lowry Track suite of solutions and products, has implemented asset tracking projects from the simplest use cases all the way up to enterprise class projects, tracking hundreds of thousands of assets and implementing workflows of significant complexity and size. Today we want to bring all of that into focus on one area, the specific requirements for positively impacting the business through automated IT asset management. Well, enough about us, so let's get started with our presentation. Let's consider a typical IT asset manager whose name is Riley. Riley is looking to manage IT assets with something more than paper and spreadsheets. Why? Because Riley is increasingly being asked by the CFO, COO, and the CEO more and more detailed questions about the organization's assets. They want to know things like, how many assets are you managing on behalf of the company? All the way down to, do you have a record of each disposal? and the security processes used. As we consider Riley's situation, let's begin with the end in mind by starting with a case study. Let's use the state of Michigan, for they were in a similar position to Riley, using paper and spreadsheets and needing to give much better, quicker, and more accurate responses to organizational questions about the state's assets. The state has thousands of servers, storage devices, networking equipment, and other IT asset hardware being utilized in their three consolidated data centers. So they understand firsthand the difficulty effectively controlling all these assets. They were also being asked to help better control the continuing IT expenditures, improve the budgeting, planning, and financial reporting, and ultimately help optimize the return on the state's IT asset investment. Finally, lost assets and overall asset security was a trending topic within the state. The state did have a homegrown configuration management database that was used to store configuration details for all their IT assets, but they lacked a way to quickly and easily keep track of the physical location of assets throughout their life cycles. In addition, the state wanted to enhance process control by using a new tracking system to trigger process exception alerts based on their specific business rules. What it boils down to is this. The state was in reactive mode and needed to get itself into proactive mode quickly. Let's take a look at what we mean by reactive and proactive modes. In IT asset management, there are a number of stages when considering ITAM maturity. The first is the chaotic or no process stage. In this stage, there are no formalized processes and no formal approach to asset management. With a CMDB and manual processes in place, the state was clearly beyond this stage. The second stage of ITAM maturity is the reactive stage. Here you have basic process development, 
some defined and implemented policies, but still a lot of firefighting because of so many things being done manually. This is where the state was at when they determined to improve their operational readiness. The third stage of maturity within ITAM is proactive, where a centralized asset repository is in place, policies and procedures are linked, and the formalized processes are to some great extent enhanced via automation. As you'll see as we progress, the state not only achieved this level of maturity, but advanced beyond to the next level as well with their ITAM project. So where did the state leapfrog to when it jumped right over the proactive stage? Well, to the service or value-oriented stage, which is the final stage of ITAM maturity. In this fourth and final stage of ITAM maturity, asset management is integrated with back-end systems such as the CMDB at the state, cross-organizational data is being leveraged like Active Directory role-based information, and asset tracking is greatly automated and is realizing concrete savings. So what is happening now at the state? What is the typical day for the IT asset manager now that they've achieved this fourth stage of ITAM maturity? Well, the state is now using a solution leveraging passive RFID technology to automate asset location tracking without human involvement. They do this using both fixed RFID readers and RFID-enabled mobile computers. This system also enables them to audit their asset inventories much more efficiently. Now something that lies beneath the automation the state now enjoys, something that makes or breaks the RFID infrastructure, is a piece of the RFID technology known as the TAG. As anyone knows who has worked with RFID technology in the past, TAG selection is a vital key to making a solution reliable. And this was true at the state as well. So let's take a moment here and have Amy tell us a little about tag selection for IT assets. Thank you, Paul. Indeed, tag selection is an important part of any RFID system. Consider for a minute the definition of RFID. It's an automatic identification and data collection technology that uses radio frequency for communicating data between an RFID tag and an RFID interrogator, commonly referred to as a reader. Add to that software, apply some business rules to your data, and now you have a business process improvement tool that increases efficiency, accuracy, and business intelligence. So clearly an RFID tag is a critical component of a system, which is why it's important that the proper tag is chosen for your specific environment and business requirements. Being such a critical piece of the puzzle, we could dedicate an entire webinar to the importance of tag selection, but today I'm just going to briefly touch on some of the main things to take into consideration when selecting the ideal tag for your system. So I'm often asked, what is the ideal tag for this situation? My answer is pretty much always the same. It's the one that reads. To determine what is going to read on your assets and what tag will be ideal for your scenario, we always consider these five basic elements. First is read range. Simply, how far away will the tag be from the reader? Is it going to be 3 feet away or 30 feet away? Next is the environment. Where is the tag going to live? Will it be outdoors, exposed to harsh temperatures, any chemicals, moisture? or in an area surrounded by metals or liquids. Next is application and attachment. What surface will the tag be attached to? Metal, plastic, glass? And how can we attach it? Two common options are adhesives and tether ties. Don't forget about the data. What information needs to be encoded? That's going to dictate the chip memory size. And also, are you going to need any human readable data? such as a company logo, maybe a barcode, or some variable information. Lastly, what size can your tag be? This is going to be dictated by the physical real estate that's available on the specific asset. By taking these items into consideration, surveying their data center, identifying samples of tags, and doing both 
testing at their facility and Lowry's RFID testing lab, the state of Michigan was able to identify a tag that reads. The considerations are summed up here. With typical IT assets, we know the answer to most of these questions about readability. So let's go back to the question in my second slide. What tag do we recommend for IT assets? Today, there are multiple tag options on the market that have been designed with a typical data center and its associated assets in mind. With so many options, it can be a challenge just to do the research and testing to narrow down to your best option, which is why we have created an IT asset tagging guide that is a more comprehensive piece specific to IT assets. It includes a listing of commonly used tag types as well as more specific placement criteria by the asset type. The guide also includes ideal tags for many of the industry-leading RFID tag manufacturers. Lastly, I can't stress enough the importance of testing. Once you've honed in on a tag or two, testing is crucial. It's important to pair up with a systems integrator that can assist you through the testing process, not just in their own test lab, but more importantly, in your real-world environment as this is a time-consuming process when you don't have the dedicated resources. With that, Paul, I'll pass it back to you. Well, thank you, Amy. Let's move on with understanding more about what is happening now at the state. The state system is automatically tracking the location of each IT asset and tag piece of equipment throughout the facilities without human intervention and makes this information available through the LowryTrack web application and web-based reporting module. Users are now able to easily locate assets, commission new servers and other assets, print RFID tags, and view complete historical data for each asset. Further, the state was able to fully integrate the tracking software with their CMDB using the SOAP Web Service API, thereby increasing the accuracy of information in both systems and eliminating the need for double entry for new assets. Also, IT managers now automatically receive real-time alerts when unauthorized moves occur that don't match the operational status of the assets and are detected by the system. So what has been the impact of IT asset management at the state? Well, the state has improved its physical inventory audits, tracking, and managing asset movements and its IT asset security through minimized misplaced IT assets and loss of critical and sensitive information. Also, the state, through its well-conceived and correctly planned project, was able to avoid common pitfalls of ITAM and so protect its ROI. And finally, the state, in leveraging the real-world experience of its partner, was also able to start with the end in mind, and so is now fully managing its assets through a systematic approach with report-based management, all of which means the state has achieved 99% inventory accuracy, the state has decreased its audit hours by 90% or more, and the state has achieved its return on investment in less than 12 months. And this is how to measure the impact of IT asset management. So let's go back to Riley our typical IT asset manager. Like most IT asset managers, Riley loves the idea of improving the company's operation, saving it money, and looking good to peers in company management. But how does Riley get started? To get started, Riley needs to find a company that is well versed in the barcode RFID asset management industry and has the requisite experience to demonstrate believable expectations in a positive outcome. In essence, Riley needs to find a trusted advisor in AIDC who will provide him best-of-breed products and services according to his own specific needs. The company Riley really needs to find should offer the following. AIDC expertise, asset tracking focus, highly scalable RFID and barcode software solutions, all the way down to training and technical support services. So with this in mind, it would be best for Riley to build a business case once a good partner is found. And for the business case, Riley would be well served to focus on the following three areas. One, 
the three major ITAM drivers that generate ROI, two, ITAM pitfalls to systematically avoid to protect that ROI, and three, real-world IT asset management execution experience. Focusing on these three areas will help Riley ensure a successful project from approval and funding all the way through to implementation and long-term maintenance and ongoing enhancements. So let's take a look at these three areas one at a time. The first area to cover is the three major drivers for IT asset management. You see, when it comes to ITAM, there are as many implementation options as there are businesses. So how does Riley know which implementation option is right for him? The answer? Riley needs to make sure he applies ITAM best practices in his project. To do this, Riley will want to understand the 10,000 foot ITAM view and from there deal with the three major drivers for boosting ROI. They are physical inventory audits, tracking and managing asset movements and IT asset security. So let's take a brief look at each one of these. For physical inventory audits, Riley will want to ensure that his project produces accurate physical counts, reduced time and manpower, reduce discrepancies, that is, assets in wrong locations or outright missing, and improved regulatory compliance. For tracking and managing asset movements, Riley will want to ensure that his project produces the ability to track automatically if possible and interface with other systems as necessary the following. Acquisitions, consolidations, disposals, equipment loans, and equipment off the grid. Finally, for IT asset security, Riley will want to ensure that his project directly reduces the incurrence of misplaced IT assets, loss of critical and or sensitive information, and IT asset shrink. Now the second area for Riley to cover is the ITAM pitfalls to systematically avoid in order to ensure he is protecting the ROI promised by his project. You see, IT asset management can be a daunting task. I think that's why so many people are still tracking their IT assets manually using spreadsheets, paper, and the like. But there is a better way. And that way for Riley includes moving from his current state to ITAM best practices, all while taking into account his unique needs and environment. So how does Riley impact ROI by using ITAM best practices? Well. Riley needs to understand the IT asset lifecycle. You see, in the IT asset lifecycle as displayed in the graph, there are a finite number of processes that need to be addressed. Where it gets interesting is in the implementation of those processes in each unique operational environment. That's where a configurable system comes into play. If Riley makes sure that the system he is considering not only provides the full process set for IT assets, but also is configurable so these processes can be made to fit his unique operational environment, then Riley will avoid the common ITAM pitfalls and protect the promised ROI of his project. The third area for Riley to understand in order to ensure that his project produces the promised impact is making certain that he can execute the project in the real world. So how does Riley do this? Well, here's a good place to practice habit number two from Stephen Covey's Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. Begin with the end in mind. That's what we've done in this presentation. Started with the case study to show you the end result, and then dove into the path that gets you to such a successful end. So for Riley, he should see how, once implemented, dashboards or other reporting tools will be used to manage his IT assets. I'm going to turn this over now to Chris for just a bit to show us how dashboards can help Riley, the typical IT asset manager, manage his IT assets. Thanks, Paul. So the purpose of Lowry Track or any other asset tracking system for that matter is to make tracking and sharing asset information either very easy or completely automated. And once you have highly reliable, objective data, the true value of the system makes itself apparent in your ability to leverage that data to improve your business. 
For managers, Lowry Track provides several out-of-the-box interactive and customizable dashboards designed to help take control of specific assets of their ITAM program. The purpose of these dashboards is to make it easy for managers to measure important metrics and take action to improve their results. The dashboards cover important ITAM practice areas such as inventory accuracy and auditing activities, asset utilization and average inventory levels, unused assets and surplus inventory, and leased asset accountability and turn-in. Here we see a snapshot of an inventory control dashboard. Specifically, the inventory control dashboard allows you to measure inventory accuracy and monitor inventory control activity to help identify problem areas, plan auditing activities, and ultimately improve inventory ac accuracy while at the same time reducing inventory control costs. With an inventory control dashboard such as this, you can quickly identify performance trends and compare current inventory accuracy to prior year performance. In addition, you can easily drill down to see auditing activities and results by location, department, and asset type. So as you can see, using data-driven dashboards to track and report your important management metrics can go a long way in helping to improve your ITAM program. Back to you, Paul. Well, thank you, Chris. You know, starting with the end in mind by understanding the reporting opportunities you should have in an ITAM implementation is really a great place to end up in this presentation on the impact of IT asset management. So as we wind down, let's take a moment to review what Riley should have learned from this presentation. Remember, we started with a look at Riley as the typical IT asset manager, using paper, spreadsheets, and maybe a number of other things to try and keep track of the company assets, and being asked lots of questions by company management in an effort to continue to trim costs and make better use of the money already spent on current assets. Then, starting with the end in mind, we took a look at a case study from the state of Michigan and saw how they went in their IT asset management from reactive all the way to proactive and beyond. Then we went back to Riley, discussing what he needed to do to go from his current state to that fourth and final stage of ITAM maturity which the state of Michigan has achieved. Remember, we talked about things like connecting with a partner who understood and had AIDC expertise, asset tracking focus, RFID and TAG expertise, these sorts of things. And we talked about things that Riley needed to understand to build his business case to ensure a successful ITAM project. A successful project all the way from approval and funding to testing, implementation, ongoing maintenance and enhancements. You know, things like the three major ITAM drivers that generate ROI, ITAM pitfalls to systematically avoid to protect ROI, and real-world IT asset management execution experience. So now that we're approaching the end of our webinar, where has all this information brought us? To where have we come? Well, if, Raleigh, if Riley follows this outline, he will produce an ITAM project for his company that will positively impact operations financially, labor-wise, and security-wise, and produce a great ROI. He will have produced a proposal and a finished project for management that will, in addition to greatly improving the company operations, strengthen his job security through outstanding performance, prove the overall value of IT to the CFO, COO, and CEO who are asking questions, demonstrate how he has a positive impact on profitability for the company, improve overall employee safety and security, show himself as an innovator within the company and amongst peers, and enhance his prospects for promotion to the next level. Riley will also generate for himself leadership, team acknowledgement and recognition, peers acknowledgement and recognition, acknowledgement of his understanding of business case development and ROI, project success record, and positive performance metrics. And that's really the impact of IT asset management. Not only for the company, who will see its operations improve dramatically, but also for the IT asset manager. The IT asset manager who is courageous enough to make ITAM best practices reality. 
Thank you, Paul, Amy, and Chris. A couple of housekeeping items before we move to our question and answer session. First, as part of the presentation, each of you will be receiving an email with instructions on how to download the Lowry Solutions IT Asset Tagging Guidelines. Secondly, each of you have been entered into a drawing to win a Kindle Fire. The winner will be notified this afternoon by your sales rep. It looks like our first question will be best answered by Paul. Paul, besides the state of Michigan, who else do you have using the system? Well, Jackie, it's a good question. We have a number of state, local, and federal government agencies using the system. We also have, uh, on the non-government side, a variety of small to mid-range businesses using the system and even some Fortune 500 companies. We're managing assets all the way from IT assets to creative assets to files to uh, vehicles, all sorts of different things that we're able to track um, with our customer base. Okay, this next one would probably go to Chris. Chris, I have over 10,000 assets. How long does it take to enter these into your system and tag each one? So usually if you have any existing asset data and spreadsheets, uh, we would suggest to start by importing that into the new system to create those base asset records. Uh, once you do that, it's very easy to go out with a, a handheld RFID reader and associate RFID tags to each asset. And generally speaking, it could take a matter of a few hours to import the assets, and then maybe a minute or two apiece to tag the assets with RFID. Uh, that could vary, though, uh, a lot, uh, depending on the quality and consistency of whatever data you have already. Again, this one's for Chris. Chris, in this Michigan, or state of Michigan example, how long did an audit take after the tags, and was there a reduction in staff? So typically our customers experience a decrease in uh, labor effort by up to 90% when switching to RFID uh, versus a manual uh, physical inventory process. Uh, so frequently they're able to reassign those staff to other more important activities. Right, this next one would go to Amy. Amy, how much does the tag cost? Um, well, it depends on the tag type for one and also the quantity purchased usually is going to play a factor. If we're just talking about durable UHF passive tags that are designed for IT environments, I think it's pretty safe. You can estimate between a dollar and five, do maybe up to five dollars, the more specialized you go. And what's the, how long would one of those tags last? Um, again, I'm going to say it's, it'll depend on the type of tag that's chosen, but in a more controlled environment like you usually find with IT assets, they can probably last five to ten years, and I think what you're typically going to see is a one to three year warranty from a manufacturer. All right, uh, Chris, I believe this one will go to you. Do the readers interfere with my servers? No, that's a good question. Uh, they shouldn't cause any interference or other issues. The RFID technology we've been talking about today is what's called UHF passive RFID, and it operates in the 902 to 928 megahertz spectrum, uh, so that shouldn't cause any issues with your servers or any of your other IT assets. All right, the next one is all of my assets already have barcodes. Can I tie the current barcode to the tag? Yes, definitely. If your assets already have a barcode asset tag, or if they have a unique serial number uh, barcode maybe assigned by the manufacturer, then those can be imported right along with the rest of your existing asset data uh, into the new system. Uh, and that's very important because it uh, allows you to continue to use those barcodes uh, with the new system while you roll out RFID. And it also makes tagging everything with RFID uh, a bit easier because it's easier to identify uh, what each asset is. Do you have to use RFID? Uh, 
No, with our solution, uh, you're not required to use RFID or barcode, uh, but using either one will provide great benefits in terms of efficiency and, uh, you know, uh, fewer errors in data entry. So we definitely recommended using some form of automatic identification. All right, one last question before we wrap things up. How long will it take to get a system like this up and running? Well, that could vary a lot depending on the size and scope of the project. Um, so for very small projects, say with one location and maybe up to a few thousand assets, uh, that could take just a matter of a few weeks to get the system rolled out. Uh, for larger organizations that might have multiple locations or multiple uh, stakeholders uh, from many departments involved, it could take a few months to implement. All right, we're at our 30-minute stopping point. There's still a couple of questions left to be addressed, and we'll have your sales reps reach out to you with those answers. Uh, once again, I want to thank you for joining us. We hope you walk away with a better understanding of the importance of IT asset management. Please feel free to visit LowrySolutions.com for some additional information. Thank you.